Hi everyone, welcome to Prevention Education, the podcast that teaches you everything about prevention. Thanks for listening and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Prevention Education episode. As always, I'm Kylie and I'm a Prevention Specialist for Preferred Family Healthcare Prevention. And today I have Mallory here with me. So Mallory, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, yes. As Kylie said, my name is Mallory, and I also work within the prevention department with Preferred Family Health Care. Um, and my job title is I'm a mental health uh, awareness training specialist. Yes. We are so lucky to have Mallory on our team. Um, she's been a huge asset to us so far. So uh, we're going to get into our get to know you question today. And so our question is, um, if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Subway. Oh, that was quick. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Is there a reason why? Like how you always just like Subway? I think so. Yeah. It started out when I was probably middle school. Like my grandma and I would go like once a week and then it just became my favorite. Like I love Subway. I would choose it over anything probably every time. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think mine would probably be like a burrito bowl. I make mm-hmm. them so often. And whenever I go out, if it's like a, a Mexican place or if it's even not a Mexican place, I just like see a rice bowl and I'm like, yep, that's Gotta it. it. <laughs> yeah. So I think that would be mine. But I like Subway. I used to also, I used to love Subway, but mm-hmm. haven't been recently, but that's an amazing answer. <laughs> Okay, well, now that we know a little bit more about us, um, we are going to hop into our topic of today. So um, as Mallory stated, she's an MHAT specialist, and MHAT stands for Mental Health Awareness Training. Um, So Mallory, what's kind of like a quick overview, not quick, but what's an overview of your job? Like what, what's kind of the highlights of what you do? Yeah, so we offer uh, trainings within the top 27 uh, counties of Missouri, and we offer different types of trainings. We have our mental health first aid, and those can be adult or youth. Um, We can do those a full in-person delivery. We can do a blended delivery, or we could do just a total virtual um, option as well for individuals that can't attend in person. Um, We also offer workshops, and those are just kind of broken down from the mental health first aid trainings and we only offer those for like an hour um, and that's for people who can't attend a full eight hour course. And then we also have our QPR trainings which are about 45 minutes and we offer those in person as well as virtual. Yeah. So in your job, um, what is like one of your favorite things about being an MHAT specialist? If someone randomly just came up to you and they're like, number one favorite thing, what would you say? I would say just spreading the awareness and breaking down the stigma. Um, I think we're seeing now within our generation that we are becoming more aware and we're talking about it more compared to what we would have in like the early 2000s or even the uh, 1990s. Um, But it's, we still need more awareness. So I would say that's my favorite part. Yeah. That's a fantastic question. I think a lot of people think they know a lot about mental health. And then Mm -hmm. after they attend one of these trainings, it's kind of like, whoa, like that is not what I expected to hear. Or um, like they thought that the stuff they were saying was really helpful, but instead it kind of maybe wasn't so helpful. And so it definitely opens people's eyes to the mental health world and how each one of us can make a difference in it. Absolutely. And I think what you're saying, like, just like the language, like, I think people say things that we think are appropriate or helpful, but within taking these trainings, you can see that, oh, that has a stigmatizing effect the way I said that. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So with being a MHAT specialist, um, I've actually had a few people ask me this because I do some of the trainings being the prevention specialist. Um, what are some certifications or what are some trainings that you have to do to be uh, a specialist in this field? Um, So we actually have to take 
the mental health first aid course ourselves, uh, both adult and youth. And that's typically like a three day course all day long. Um, and so we have instructors that are teaching us. And then at our, we have a teach back, it's called. So we practice teaching the material to our instructors. And that is how we will be able to get like our certificates or not. Yeah. Yeah. And they have this for the adult mental health first aid, youth mental health first aid. Um, I know there's a new teen mental health first aid. I don't know if we're getting into that, but um, that is the same thing. Lots of days of training and yeah. even QPR, right? There's like an yeah. online training that you have to do in order to be certified to be a trainer. Yep. And that one's nice because that one's like a self-paced course. Yeah. So you can really take a time to like uh, get the material soaked up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome program. So if anyone is listening and you're like, what are their credentials? How do they know about any of this? Uh, they're all trained. All of the specialists are trained. Um, we know what to say. We know what to do. We have instructions and we have kind of mentors in the field too, that are always there for us too. So absolutely, yeah, cool. Um, let's see. So with MHAT specialists, I guess, what is your favorite training to train people on? Is it adult, youth, mental health, first aid, QPR, the workshops? Which one would you, is your favorite? I honestly have two favorites. Um, I really enjoy the QPR. That's the uh, question, persuade, refer for suicide. Um, yeah. I think that is just a huge thing to have within our society um, and to, again, to bring more awareness about that and to break the stigma and to hopefully make people more comfortable. The topic of suicide never, I think, going to be a comfortable conversation, but it helps us as individuals to feel confident um, and be able to help an individual that is facing this challenge. Yeah. Yes. QPR is a very, very good training to have in your tool belt. That is for I sure. And it applies to everybody, you know, um, youth to uh, adults to or elderly. Um, and then I would say I like the adult mental health. Um, I say that personally because I personally deal with more adults um, and yeah. long-term goals. I plan to be inter engaging with adults in the community. So. Yeah. Yes. I think having these trainings and knowing the topics as a trainer so beneficial for your future, especially like we're a pretty young department. Mm -hmm. So we all know that all of us won't be in prevention for forever. And so having all this training is so good. And just in your normal everyday life, knowing how to talk to people about this is so good. So really good. is. Yeah. Well, awesome. Okay. So is there anything else about your job that you would like to share or, um, if someone just asked you, like, what is a mental health awareness training specialist? Is there anything else that comes to mind that you would want our listeners to know? Um, I would just want them to know, like, we're out here to spread awareness through our trainings. We have uh, multiple trainings that we do offer. Um, I know I talked briefly on our workshops, but within our workshops, we have multiple topics that we do cover. Um, so, yeah, I would just say we're out here to teach people to spur, uh, spread awareness and to just advocate for how important mental health really is. Yes. And the work that you guys do is truly amazing. I know a lot of people in our community really value you guys um, and talk really highly about the trainings that you guys do. So thank you for the work that you do. Um, and if you're listening and if you're interested more in what Mallory does, you can email her and it's mallory.selvi at pfh.org. Or you can just email mo prevention at pfh.org and we'll get you in contact with Mallory too. Um, but no question is ever a dumb question. So if you listen to this and you have so many more questions about what this position is or how you can get involved or how you can attend one of these trainings, definitely be sure to reach out. So thank you, Mallory, for all of your knowledge and your willingness to share about your position. Um, and thank you to our listeners for tuning into another episode. And we will hopefully catch you on another podcast. Okay. Thank you, Bye, Kyle. everyone. Yeah. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into our podcast. Remember to follow us on social media at PFH Prevention. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Spotify, and more podcasting platforms. And make sure to email us at moprevention at pfh.org with any questions and feel free to call us at 660-627-7404. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.